Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I'm asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them, and now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Hi, everyone. I am Luke Hanslick. I am a senior at Marshall High School, on my way to graduation, and then off to Villanova next year to study biology. I would like to give a special thanks to my parents, who inspired me, and to my brothers, who always pushed me forward. To all my teachers here at Holy Comforter, especially Dennis McMullen. Now, I've been at Holy Comforter for as long as I can remember, which has taught me so much. It has given me a community of youth that I can always rely on. It has allowed me to start every week with a fresh helping of God. Holy Comforter gives me a place to donate my time with facets and with Vacation Bible School. Yet, after being here nearly my whole life and hearing so many good sermons, I just had no idea how to write one. (laughs) It seemed so easy at first. Just explain why Jesus is great. And really, who doesn't think Jesus is amazing? (laughs) But soon I realized I had no idea where to begin. Starting with today's readings, I knew immediately that I connected to the letter of Peter, as he spoke of relying on God in times of doubt. His letters were sent to Christians who were being killed for their faith in God. He told them to remain strong and faithful to the Lord, to put all doubt and anxiety into Jesus, and he will restore them. So what kind of hard times could I have faced in comparison to these Christians who are dying for what they believe in, especially with such little life experience? Well, believe it or not, Being on the worst lacrosse team in the district is a very hard thing to do. (laughs) Now for a little context. I had just come out of a successful season of winter track, where I went to the state and then the national championship for the 4x8 relay race. 
However, for the spring season, I had to choose between lacrosse and track. Now, the easy choice would have been to continue with track. Yet, I felt a pull to play lacrosse for a few different reasons. For one, I'd been on varsity since freshman year. And two, my lacrosse coach already let me know that I would be a captain this year. I was just so torn between the two, as I had to make the impossible choice of which sport to participate in. Now track is something I can individually excel in, something I am really good at, something where I actually receive recognition and merit for all my hard work. On the other hand, as their captain, is it not my duty to help train the next level of lacrosse players? After much debate, I did decide to play lacrosse. Again, because I felt obligated as a leader. Doing lacrosse helped me to develop my resilience. Over the course of the season, with every loss, I felt like I made the wrong choice. <laughs> every missed pass or bad ground ball reinforced the idea that I made the wrong decision. And of course, I was so jealous seeing the track team thrive without me. But I stuck with it. So why would I choose something be, why would I choose something I knew was going to end in failure? Again, because I felt responsible. However, maybe this responsibility was something more. I asked myself, where did all this responsibility come from? Well, of course, it was how I was raised. My parents always taught me the value of putting others before myself. By doing lacrosse, I could put the greater needs of the worst lacrosse team before the lesser <laughs> needs of the already fabulous track team. <laughs> because of this feeling, I knew I was on the right path. I, and this is how I feel God's presence. He is in every decision we make. He nudges us every day through our surroundings. But for me, especially through my relationships with other people. The relationship I feel with my teammates was put there by God. The responsibility I feel for my team and for my coach is the presence of God. But it is hard to feel God sometimes. It can be so easy to go an inch and then another inch and another before you realize you've gone a whole mile down the wrong path. So how can we make the right decision and follow God's will, especially as a teenager in this day and age? We'll start by surrounding yourself with good people, people who won't pressure you into making the poor choices. After every important decision, try to reflect and see if you could have made a better one. Now trust me, this all comes back to the reading of Peter. The whole season, I built resilience just as the Christians in Peter's letters did. I had to go through this suffering because it was the only way to make my team better. And by our last game, although we knew it would end in defeat, I am still proud of the level that we played at. Because of our collective hard work, our skill has grown astronomically. And even if I'm not there to witness it, I know the team will only continue to grow until they match the competitiveness of our district. This trend becomes evident through the number of games we've won throughout my career. My freshman year, well, we didn't really have a season because of COVID, but we lost our only two scrimmages. Then my sophomore year, we won only one game. In my junior year, we won two games. And then this year, we won a grand total of three games. <laughs> and I hope that our improvement is in part due to my commitment and leadership all four years. In the end, I am thankful for such a successful season and thankful that God led me to choose lacrosse. 
Peter's lesson of resilience is one that I know I will take with me for the rest of my life. Although over the next four years, it will be especially important to remember. Now this takes a bit of a dark turn, but please bear with me. Suicide is the second most common type of death among college students. So how can so many of our bright youths end up like this? It's because they no longer feel the presence of God around them. Many times, they are stuck in a single room and have trouble fostering new relationships. Therefore, they aren't experiencing God's love. They are truly suffering in a way similar to the Christians in Peter's letter, which is why it's so important for them to remember his lesson and to hang in there. For now, all we can do is pray that they do find their way back to God. So, let us pray. God, please help all youths in or going to college. Allow them to feel your presence or to be resilient when they don't. Give them the strength to build new connections and enjoy all college has to offer. Can I get an amen? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.